Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I'm right, glad to welcome on Matty Hudak as we do every Tuesday here, a little film review after the Saints games. And uh, Matty, I would imagine uh, this one a bit more, uh, <laughs> a bit more enjoyable to to dissect as opposed to the last two weeks. Thanks for the time. How are you? Uh, I, I'm good. I'm very confused overall by the weather as I'm sitting here in a sweatshirt and, like you said, the film that uh, I watched after having the pleasure of being in the dome for the last loss. Oh. Um... The Bucks game was atrocious, and prior to that, the fourth quarter blowing the lead against Green Bay, a Green Bay team which was uh, just terrible on Monday Night Football against the Raiders. It, it leaves you scratching your heads. And maybe, this will, maybe the answer, Matty, is just that the Saints team just isn't great and, and aren't going to be great. But uh, they did work against New England on Sunday up there in Foxborough. Let, let's start with the offense, which we know put up 34 points, 17 points off of turnovers, but... So much of the focus was on Pete Carmichael getting the offense going. What changes did you notice, material changes did you notice in the offense? I mean, the obvious immediate differences to me were the use of play action and motion. And to your point about those press conferences with Pete Carmichael last week, it did kind of seem like he was feeling a little in over his head or overwhelmed in some facet. But apparently that was all in the playbook. And I do remember him saying something of, they are in the system. I just need to do a better job of calling them. And it's kind of hard to believe that at the time, considering that, you know, as people have pointed out, it's not just this season. It was last season as well. But now you have the quarterback and all of your playmakers back. And it was just good to see that those plays do indeed exist, that Taysom Hill isn't the only answer to his creativity and things like motion and getting those guys out in space that have the speed like Rashid Shahid, it also helps out the offensive line, be able to tell what the defense is doing. It's really unsurprising to me that the game in which they really committed to the run and they committed to it early and didn't abandon it and kept at it in the red zone at that weren't trying to do all these overly fancy things. It really felt like they were just going back to the basics of we have really good playmakers on offense. Let's just get them the football and get them out in space like they did with Kendra Miller and Alvin Kamara quite a bit as well. What, uh, um, I'll come back to the running backs. Actually, well, let's stay on the running backs. What did you see? Uh, we saw Kendra Miller have a really nice uh, run late in the ballgame. Did you notice anything different with Kamara in particular here in his second week back uh, with the Saints? It, it just was a little more versatile while still uh, re re relying on him primarily as that every down back. And I think that's kind of how he works is just not necessarily, again, that most conventional running style. So it helps be able to bring in Kendra Miller and have him also take some of those hits up the middle. But even just the simple things like tossing it out of the backfield or having him running just a simple route out there, like you saw with Kendra Miller, just it, it was something like you said, 33 yards after catch. But he, he really just ran laterally and waited for the football and had good vision downfield. And you know you have that in Alvin Kamara. But it was really the fact that they – had him out there in that first series and really committed to him in the running game. And then again, in the red zone, I really can't remember the last time they just ran Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. down and down and down again until he got into the end zone. Sometimes they would put in Taysom Hill and then sometimes they would just go kind of call some inexplicable play, but the blocking was better. And it was just, again, those little simple things that really, uh, it was astonishing to see how much of a difference they make, but it goes to show, I think, why people were so frustrated these first few weeks. Uh, 22 rushing attempts for Alvin Kamara in this game. 42 attempts uh, on the day as opposed to 26 passes to underscore Maddie's point. They did rely heavily on the running game in New England, and clearly it worked. A big part of that, though, also, Maddie's got to be the improvement of the offensive line. You know, we were sitting here the first two weeks, you and I doing this, and we're talking about Trevor Penning, wondering, it, like, does this guy have the ability to be a left tackle in the NFL? Three weeks have now gone by, and when you don't call someone's name on the offensive line, generally that's a good thing. And we have not talked much about Trevor Penning. What what have you seen? What type of development has been there from the Saints' former first-round pick? For me, he's honestly shown one of the quicker trajectories of growth on the offensive line when you look at the capital that has been invested in a lot of those players outside of Ryan Ramchick in the first round. Eric McCoy was just on kind of the smidge of the second round. But Cesar Ruiz took several years and, and 
when he was getting there, it, it was definitely a sore spot. You talk about people's names being called. It was a tie kind of between him and Andres Pete, which kind of comes back here and there every so often. But the fact that this is really, to me, Trevor Penning's rookie year, because there's just only so much development you can do when someone has a Liz Frank injury. You can't do anything other than mental reps. And when it's a guy that was a raw product that you were liking the raw physical traits of, but needing to kind of shape up. Yes, a lot of that is in the classroom, but they just have to be able to get their feet wet and actually play in a game setting. But like you said, the fact that they're not caught, we're not really talking about him. We're still early on in the year. If penalties are the worst thing, it speaks again to the rawness of him that they're working on shoring up. But left tackle again, Taron Armstead, the way that he protected Drew Brees for so many years, the way that he's improved in his pass protection is a lot more important to me than some of those false starts or holds. Uh, Maddie Hudak is our guest on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. Give her a follow. Uh, one more on the offensive side of the ball. I did want to ask about tight end. We saw a target to J- Jimmy Graham early. Unfortunately, it was a drop. But uh, also the really creative play, the, the touchdown, the, the shovel pass to Foster Morrow. No Juwan Johnson. What are you noticing about how the Saints are or maybe are changing the way that they use uh, their tight ends? Dude, I just have to say, I love the shovel pass when Tulane did that on fourth down in Houston last year. I it was just It's the ugliest looking thing. But <laughs> again, we talk about the red zone struggles. However you get in, get in the end zone. And it was really intriguing to see how much we had said that you know, tight ends haven't been utilized enough in the red zone. And then you didn't really see that coming with Foster Moreau. Uh, and Jimmy Graham, I did note that on there where it did kind of feel like Well, we tried the tight ends and we gave him a good route and and I have no idea what happened to him on that. He really just should have caught that ball, but I almost really don't care about the tight ends in this game because just, it seemed like the important thing was getting Michael Thomas the ball. That was something else that was extremely important because then now you've really reestablished Michael Thomas as that receiver that needs to be covered, that needs to be a threat and then Olave and Shahid uh, are able to open up and so the tight ends to me just kind of fell by the wayside of the fact that they were actually using their playmakers this time. Uh, Maddie, it's when you flip it over to the defensive side of the ball by the way you're right about Michael Thomas seven targets it led, led the team in receptions also with seven targets led the team so they were definitely forcing the ball to Thomas which I think we could all agree is, is always a good idea. Um, we've been waiting for somebody to emerge opposite Cam Jordan. I, th- look, that was obviously Trey Hendrickson. They didn't pay him. He left in free agency. But we know Davenport, Turner, we, like we, they just drafted Foskey. And here comes Carl Granderson. Uh, they broke him off. And man, this guy has just been a stud. Has this just, has this always been there, Maddie? And they just, they didn't recognize it, which is why they kept drafting ends opposite. Like, how do you make sense of what we're seeing from Carl Granderson, who looks like any lead edge rusher in the NFL right now? I think that there is definitely this uh, some type of market change. I don't know uh, how you're able to tell if someone has this type of ascension in them, because to me, it's just been really an, an accelerator on the gas pedal since this season started. And I think he's always been a solid opposite Cam Jordan, but you're right. It just always kind of felt like he was in the B plus category. And all of a sudden he is a plus, I think. And, and I'd like to kind of look more at, the defensive line as a whole because it is really intriguing at this point i can't ignore the fact that the interior has also been so much better this year and that they're again talking about capital immediately paying off brian brzee is probably the one since cam jordan that is immediately showing dividends on that side of the ball in the trenches and when you have the interior able to really hold down those blocks it does kind of open up the opportunity for your edge rushers but Credit to the way that he just has such a quick get off. And I just, it definitely seems like he's added to his pass rush repertoire. I don't know exactly what, but he has the speed and he has the the power to be able to get around guys and and read the backfield and and shed blocks at the right time. It it is a good question though, of how did this all kind of just spring out? And that's where I tend to think that just the unit is operating so much better this year that it's allowing these guys to really break out. Man, it's almost like you didn't even know what you had right under your nose. With, uh, with Carl Granderson, but it's been a welcomed addition to this team. All right, last thing for you. The Saints get Marcus May back this week. That's great news. How did the backups do in his stead this week and over the last three weeks? I really liked Jordan Howden, just looking back at that game. And really, it was a hard game to analyze um, pass coverage against because there really just wasn't that much going on for New England. Uh, but... 
I just felt like when you're looking at traits in a defensive back, you saw that he had a fluid back pedal, that he was able to really go from middle of the field closed to middle of the field open, carry those routes. And then there were plays where he didn't necessarily make the tackle, but you could see that he really wants to come downhill and stop the run. And I also think it, it speaks to Tyron Matthew as well. And the fact that when you look at all the turnover last year, we were all kind of expecting the Marcus May suspension. They just all ended up kind of getting injured here and there several games at a time instead. And to me, this is really the first season that the intended kind of unit out there, save for the Elante Taylor position switch has been able to go out there. And even though they're missing Marcus May, I think again, it's, it, it's just a, a symptom of the larger system working really well. And you just can't ignore how well the saints are able to draft defensive backs. I'm really more than willing to bet at this point that all of them are going to be somewhat of a hit. Uh, she is Maddie Hudak. Follow her on Twitter at Maddie Hudak underscore 94. I guess on X, not Twitter, X, whatever. You know, you know the, the the platform formerly. No one accepts nah, that. Whatever. I, I, thank you. Thank you. I, I, you know, what do you do at this point? I mean, they're branding it as X. It's X, but everybody still says Twitter. I miss the Bluebird. Uh, follow her on social media, Maddie Hudak. We appreciate it, Maddie. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's like how Bill Belichick just does his little NFL protests by wearing grandma hoodies. So that's what we're doing here. <laughs> we'll, be cut off, <laughs> we'll see you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.